You've got to be honest and you've got to be honest without hesitation in those moments. Respect of and trust for each other is crucial in an environment where flexibility and choice become the norm. As a firm, PwC's global purpose includes building trust in society, so it stands to reason that basic trust in each other from our connections and clients is crucial. New spaces and new technology are only tools. New ways of working won't happen without new mindsets about how we establish trust with each other. This puts an incredible responsibility on all of us to have conversations we've never had before, to work through boundaries that may constantly shift and be aware of unconscious bias we may have towards certain ways of working. Hi, I'm Charlie Pickering. I'm the host of the Work It podcast. Work It is your window into the new ways of working at PwC as we move towards 2020 to help you think about the way that you work, how you can be at your best with your clients and colleagues, and what the future looks like for all of us as professionals and simply members of society. Over this series of eight episodes, we're delving into themes that affect us all, from how we work to the psychology of simplicity, to thinking about our personal purpose. This week, we're talking about the relationships we have with our clients, as well as with each other, and how trust and respect suddenly have a lot to do, not only with how we find balance as individuals, but how we succeed as teams. Joining us with a unique perspective on this subject is Andrea Clark, a former foreign correspondent who spent her life mastering the skill of never missing a deadline while working remotely in the most chaotic of circumstances. Andrea, welcome to the Work It podcast. Uh, So tell us a bit about your professional life up until now. You're a journalist working abroad, lived in DC, but but really travelled a lot for work. Tell us a little bit about your work as a correspondent. As a reporter, every day every day is different, but the way I operated was always the same. And so that meant essentially I was constantly working remotely, but there were three things that came into play really when the day got started, regardless of what the assignment was. That was number one, making a meaningful connection with whoever I was working with. Number two, being very clear about the objectives and the deadline. And thirdly, being in constant contact with the person on the other end of the phone So I would constantly be challenged to build trust in nanoseconds, especially when there was a big, breaking, developing story. So, And a really great example of that was the Virginia Tech shooting. Of course, it was a massive story, so all the freelance cameramen were being booked up. So I had to talk someone into that I hadn't worked with, talk them into spending the next 24 hours with me, while I was also keeping the producers on the Sydney end Um, convinced that I had everything under control and so that's where that connection comes into play and that's where the constant communication so I'm on the phone to the producer the producer is are you going to make it without hesitation I say I can see the live site yes we're going to be there if I'd hesitated in that moment or if I had over promised and under delivered he would have never worked with me again Mm. and the, the network would have probably been very reluctant to call me when there was another story because there was simply would have been no trust there about my capability and my judgment in that moment. So I've learnt as a reporter that trust is built in those tiny transactions and you've, you know, which for us is really about having the experience to back yourself in that moment and build trust with that person on the other end of the phone. So it's not easy to tell someone who is an employer or your boss that you can't deliver something that they're asking for. How do you manage that? Trust in well, in those moments, it's about calling it. It's about making sure there's no gap in communication. I think silence suffocates trust. Silence kills trust. So there can't be a gap in communication, but equally so, you can't you can't overpromise if you know that you can't deliver. And I think trust is built with someone when you get a sense of their reliability and you get a sense that their judgment is is right on. You've got to be honest and you've got to be honest without hesitation in those moments. So your coverage of Virginia Tech is a great example of when under that pressure you did everything right and the result was great. So how about a situation where it didn't work out and what did you do to to regain trust or maintain trust through a difficult situation like that? If you don't mind telling a story where you weren't perfect. Mm, sure. Um, 
I might talk about a, a day that I had in Baghdad with a local news crew. So Yeah, absolutely. When I landed in Baghdad, my job there was to pick up a local camera crew and to cover stories that would demonstrate to the US government that the money they were spending in Iraq with this particular aid group was working. The programs they were supporting were actually working. We had I basically followed three rules through th- that particular assignment, and they were, number one, simplify objectives with the team. Number two, get very comfortable with courteous confrontation. And thirdly, give everyone a chance to talk. So when it comes to simplifying objectives, it was a we were in the red zone. We were not in the green zone. We were being woken up by car bombs every morning and there was gunfire all day, every day. High pressure, chaos, lots of room for emotions to be triggered you know very quickly so not just emotions but for survival instinct to overcome professional instinct oh, absolutely. in some to some extent mm. every, you're yeah. given every reason at every turn <laughs> yeah to get out of there <laughs> yeah absolutely but you've got to make peace with that before you even land so uh seriously tense environment um but we had to you know we had to follow a policy about calling issues if something went wrong. And there was one particular day when we were interviewing the head of the community stabilisation program, which is like a $500 million program. And uh, we got back to um, the compound and I started playing the tape and I couldn't hear any audio. And I thought, as a journalist, you're thinking, this is my worst nightmare. So I've, I've since learnt um, that there is actually you know, a, a, a formal framework for this. But in the moment, I basically firstly decided, okay, I'm going to stay very measured about this. I'm going to make contact. Um, I'm going to make contact with Ahmad. In other words, how are you feeling? I know it's Ramadan. I know these guys are starving. It's 45 degrees. Make contact. So check in with someone first. And then give the issue context. Ahmad, I'm having, I'm having an issue with this particular tape. I can't hear the audio and then go into more about the content. If we don't have this audio, we're going to have to find a way to go back and redo this interview, which is going to be really difficult on so many levels. So Mm. that allowed all of us to put any concerns we had on the table, courteous confrontation. That was really critical. It turned out that I was the one at fault. And boy, would I have felt like an idiot if I'd launched into some sort of emotional tirade. But in that moment... But if you had gotten on the phone and said, what the F's going on... Yep. This is a disaster. You're an idiot. It would have gotten you nowhere. And probably you would never have found out that you had the audio. Of course. (laughs) And in that moment, imagine what that does to the relationships with the people around you. All they're sitting back thinking is, wow, this person's an absolute hothead. And I can't trust them when, when things go wrong. I can't trust them in those moments where we really need to work the problem as quickly as we can and find an answer that doesn't mean, you know, more resources or more cost to the company. So let's give people something simple that, that they can use. If they're in an evolving workplace with, with people working more remotely, what are, the, what are the basics of making that work? Be very clear about the objective and how that person likes to work. So understand their work rhythms so you can meet their expectations and then be in constant contact. If you're working on a project over the course of a day, a week or a month, be in constant contact and... You know, and go beyond what's expected of you. My, f- The favourite people that I work with are people that send me articles about things that they know I'm interested in. And they do it off the cuff on a random Sunday morning. I saw this article. I know that you're obsessed with this issue. Here you go. So it's about always thinking about, on a, you know, from a client point of view, what's the most important thing to that client? How can I be supportive, you know, in a meaningful and authentic way? I mean, I wouldn't. And I do that with my clients. Um, so three things, make a meaningful connection, even in a brief exchange, be clear about the objective and be in constant contact with your team or with the person that you want to build trust with. So they have confidence, your capability uh, throughout the life of the project. And if you're a, a team leader mm-hmm. with, with teams working remotely, mm. the responsibility is also on you to foster that sort of relationship with everyone. 100%. You don't have to be a CEO to be a great leader, but great leaders prioritise communication, I think, over everything. I mean, we talk about trust, there are a couple of different pillars to that, but I think communication comes first. And a great team leader will articulate the objectives of the, of the, of the project and all the task at hand, and they will establish a working rhythm so everyone knows what's expected of them. Say for, there might be a dashboard where everyone's workflow is transparent or there might be another way where we can all see how 
you know, where the project is at. But be clear about what that looks like and what your expectations are as a leader so you can keep people along the journey with you. You've got to bring people with you. So we've talked a lot about how you build respect with those in your team, in your organisation, but you also work with clients. Mm -hmm. So how do you build trust with clients in the same way that you do or, or different ways to those people that you work with? Number one, I'm very clear about the scope of the work and I ask for agreement about the scope of the work. <clears throat> Number two, I'm clear about when and how that will be delivered and who else will be on the team that is going to be delivering that work. Uh, thirdly, I always follow up the day after delivery, delivery and ask for specific feedback. So they know I really do care a lot. I'm very conscious about, very conscientious about the quality of the work that I'm delivering. And number four, I always follow up well beyond the delivery. If I see an article that's relevant to a client, I will take a, a screenshot of it and send it to them and say, I know this is a priority for you at the moment, making sure that you haven't missed this. I'll make sure that my communication is constant with them and that I'm not, you know, that it's not, uh, I'm not parachuting in, delivering something and then leaving. I really do care. Follow up is a huge personal branding piece. Yeah. You know, you know, if you care, you will take the time to follow up. You won't let it go off into the ether and let anything go unsaid. Uh, lovely to meet you. I've definitely learned from this. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for having me. Speaking of connecting remotely, let's check in with Jen and Rob, wherever they are. Hey, Rob. How's it going? Oh, hi, Jen. Yeah, well, thanks. Great spot you got here with the sun shining in. I'm way over the back there. Oh, right, right. You've been working some long hours. <laughs> yeah, I've got a big proposal due. Yeah, I've been getting here progressively earlier. A half an hour each day. <laughs> I'm talking 8.30, 8, 7.30, 7am. <laughs> I just I just can't beat you to this sunny seat. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a real early riser. And you're always here till late too. 7.30, 8 o'clock. You know, the proposal. Gosh. So diligent. Good on you. Good on you. Of course, the whole idea of this new space is to shake things up and move around, meet different people. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a bit of a creature of habit, I'm afraid. So why not make a habit of moving about? It'd almost be like, well, that fitness. I see you're already wearing hiking boots in the office. Uh, are, are you uh, trying to suggest something, Jen? I know what you are, Rob. What? You're a camper. Oh, OK. Here we go. That's right, a camper. Never moving from your campsite. Yeah, OK, OK. And what exactly constitutes a camper? On top of the hiking boots? All this tin tuna at your desk? So I bulk by. It's cheaper that way. Sure. But I walked past yesterday and you were making damper from scratch. That was simply bread, Jen. It was bread to go with the tuna. We're in an office, Rob. Explain the mozzie spray. I don't need to explain... What you're reading there? A rough guide to knot tying. Very interesting. Well, now, I can explain that. And what's this, Rob? What is this? Jen, th that is an analogue wristwatch. No, Rob. It's a compass. This is a brand new, professionally designed office space. Why on earth do you need a compass? Unless... Fine! Fine. I'm a camper. I camp. Are you happy? You've worked it out. Now, why don't you give yourself a badge? A badge? Spoken like a true Boy Scout. Look, I'm not trying to be mean. I just think it's important we all respect the space and follow the rules for the benefit of everyone, not just you. <sighs> Fine. I'll move. It's Wednesday anyway. I should pop home and check in on the kids, I guess. It's Thursday. But thank you for obliging. Yes! Oh, and, uh, Jen? Uh-huh? About the desk? Don't pull the blinds down. It doesn't like it. That's all from me this week. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about Andrea or want to share how your team is building trust or working in new ways, please join the discussion on G+. And if you enjoyed this episode, you can find more simply by visiting the Work It series on the Road to 2020 G+ community. My name's Charlie. Check you next time.